On August 21st, 2001, I flew from San Diego to Las Vegas. As I was going through airport security, I was asked to empty the contents of my bag. And I pulled out a three-inch knife, and I handed it to security. They opened it and closed it several times, and then eventually gave me the knife back and said, go to your gate. One month later, the nation's view on physical security was forever changed. So as it relates to cybersecurity and hackers, and today I'm going to refer to hackers as cyber tigers, <laughs> are we living in August of 2001? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but I don't like the direction that we're headed. And we must protect ourselves from the cyber tigers hunting us online. In September of 2017, Equifax reported a breach or a compromise of 143 million accounts. That's a staggering number. It's more than a third of the US population. The information in these accounts was everything from name, date of birth, social security number, address, driver's license number. And I think some would have you believe that maybe your favorite color or Netflix viewing habits, but thank you. Um, <laughs> obviously, that's a joke, but I think you know where I'm going with this. And this data that was in these records to a cyber tiger is gold and worth millions on the dark web, which is the internet's version of the black market. And oh, by the way, this breach occurred because the servers at Equifax were not being patched on a timely basis. Yeah, right? <clears throat> cyber tigers are everywhere in this world. And we, essentially, are the cuddly kittens of a cyber society built on trust. We trust email, websites, and other internet users. And the tigers prey on that trust. Every person in this room, all of us, have a connection or a lifeline to the digital world. And we're forced to rely on third-party companies to hold our data yet we're left completely vulnerable to their ability to protect it. I'm talking about things like online shopping, email, job applications, to home buying, car buying, paycheck receiving, and the list just goes on and on. You know, our doctor's health care portal, our bank accounts, or even a credit rating agency like Equifax aren't safe from cyber tigers. Over 30 years ago, before I became an FBI agent chasing cyber tigers around the globe, I was finishing high school, and I was receiving a graduation gift from my parents, a brand new typewriter. Hopefully it was newer than this, but it was a typewriter. A couple of years later, in college, I took an elective, Personal Computing 101. The final exam for this course type a two-sentence document, save it to a floppy, and hand it to the professor in kind of a peace out way. Well, I was the last guy in the class. You think you know where this is going. Sweating profusely, cursing under my breath, obviously confused. Definitely not my proudest moment. I think we can agree. But after some guidance from the professor, I did finally peace out, and I left the room. But I was scarred. So the first thing I did that summer was buy a personal computer from Price Club. We all know it is Costco now. Um, three years later, I was hired by the FBI as a computer assistant after all that. Now, was I the best that the FBI could do for IT support? No, not even close. But understand that the FBI's IT motto in the 1990s was probably best described as yesterday's technology tomorrow. I would go on to become an FBI special agent, 
And I've developed a tremendous passion for cybersecurity. And I've devoted my career to keeping the online jungle safe. And what I've learned is that we're all vulnerable and most of us have no idea. I'm going to tell us and tell you two stories today about how cyber tigers are hunting us online. So buckle up, everyone. I'm taking us for a ride to hunt cyber tigers in the online jungle. My first story is about the tiger that represents another government or a nation state, and they target big networks and sensitive data. In 2015, the unprotected servers of the Office of Personnel Management, or OPM, were attacked by Chinese cyber tigers. And for those that don't know, OPM, that's the agency that holds the background investiga investigations for everybody in the country that has a secret or top secret clearance, yours truly included. The information in these records contain name, date of birth, social security number, and much more for not only the person holding the clearance, but their neighbors, their coworkers, and their family members. This information might be worth millions to some, but to a nation state, it's priceless. The Chinese cyber tigers got into the network and stole 22 million of these background investigations dating all the way back to the 1980s. And as a result of this breach, the OPM director was forced to resign and numerous people in the IT department were fired. And the cyber tiger runs free. Now, unless you're holding national secrets or background investigations on your home computer, and if you are, I want to talk to you after. <laughs> unless you're doing that, you're probably safe from those cyber tigers. You're not safe, however, from the cyber tiger that's looking to take our personal information or violate our trust in the system in order for them to make a profit. And that's what my second story is about. I'm going to tell you about the first time home buying couple. They're so excited. They're going to own a home. They go to the title company and they receive wiring instructions on how to close escrow, which is one day away. And it's going to be $171,000. They leave the title company and go home, and they receive an email also from the title company with new wiring instructions. Thinking nothing of it, they send the money to the new location, and they call the title company and tell them what they've done, that we've sent you the money. And the title company has to say, oh, we never sent you a new email or an email, and there are no new wiring instructions and there's nothing that we can do for you. The couple is out $171,000, their brand new dream home, and their trust in the system. And another cyber tiger runs free. I've told us two true stories today about how the tigers are hunting us online. The first involved the cyber tiger from another government that targets big networks and sensitive data. The second type of tiger violates our trust and takes our information to make a profit. We must protect ourselves from the cyber tigers hunting us online. You know, if you think about it, physical security awareness was pretty soft before 9-11. In fact, on September 10th, 2001, you would typically go right through airport security, just kind of walk in, as I referenced earlier in this talk. But then 9-11 happened, and the nation's view on physical security changed forever. Now, getting through airport security is met with a whole new level of seriousness, and we've all come to accept that inconvenience in exchange for our safety. Now, we all have things to work on, both as individuals and as companies. And we must demand that third-party companies who we trust with our information are vigilantly guarding it. We have countless examples of them not doing that. 
And the time is right now for us to demand better and more. We must demand that the companies are patching their servers on a timely basis, that they're segmenting their networks and using VLANs, that they're monitoring those networks and configuring their firewalls properly, and demand that they're using virtual private networks for the remote users. And is it too much to ask that they encrypt our data? I didn't mention this, but the OPM story, those 22 million records were not encrypted. So I ask now, companies, can you, do, can you encrypt our data, both at rest and on the fly? I know they can. As individuals, there are necessary steps that we all must take to guard our own data. And I'd like to see us educate ourselves on becoming safer internet users and stop using open Wi-Fi networks for sensitive web browsing. Stop opening email attachments of cute puppies, surfing squirrels, and laughing babies from people we don't know. Stop using the same password for Facebook, school, work, online banking. And let's all agree to stop being the cuddly kittens of a digital society. There's things that we should start doing as well. Let's start educating ourselves to the risks. Start using two-factor authentication whenever possible. Start talking to industry experts. And let's start developing a thirst for cybersecurity awareness. On behalf of our nation, I hunt cyber tigers every day for my job. And I asked you to buckle up because I was going to take us for a ride through the cyber threatscape of the online jungle. You know, there was a time in this country when seatbelts weren't required. In fact, not many people at all wore seatbelts. And then we as a people got together and we looked at the data and decided, wow, you know what? I mean, people are dying at a crazy alarming rate. And it's because they're not wearing seatbelts. So the Buckle Up campaign was launched. Now everybody wears seatbelts. We don't even think about it. It's second nature. But it took society as well as the authorities to come to this decision and to make it happen. And we're all safer because of it. Cyber tigers are everywhere. We're going to be OK. I know we are, because that's who we are. But don't we owe it to ourselves and our children and their data to shift our paradigm? We must protect ourselves to make the online jungle safer. Thank you. <laughs>